Hello everybody, it's Wyron here with a Total War Warmer 2 2v2 community cast. And this fun little submission was sent in by Davina Q, uh, so I really do appreciate it. It is a bit of High Elf and Tomb King against Bretonia and uh, Midland action. So definitely looking to see some fun builds and a bit of mayhem on what I do believe is Varg Encampment. So you can see this is a pretty uh this is a pretty well built map for just massacring each other in the pit fight there so we'll definitely see how things break down going over the compositions here for the lords we do have high queen kalita here for the tomb kings she is riding atop her snake uh, it does appear that she's got tomb strike venom wave my will be done uh blessing of asaph of course to buff this wonderful bone giant here as well as i guess these skeleton archers and uh, she does of course have the curse and all that good stuff uh, alongside her leading the high elves hidden somewhere in here, there we go, is Tyrion with the Heart of Avalorn, Faint and Repost, and Stand Your Ground, and he is mounted on Malhandir, so he is going to be stupidly mobile, and definitely an absolute pain in the posterior to kill for the Bretonians and the Middenlanders. Now for Middenland, they are led by none other than Boris Toddbringer, who else could you bring if you're playing as Middenland, uh, besides the grumpy old Count, uh, of course he is actually fully kitted out, he's got Hold the Line, he's got White Cloak of Ulrich, Crushed Weak, uh, Middenland Runefang, Foe Seeker, and Deadly Onslaught, so literally the full kit, and then for Bretonia we do have the a Prophetess of Life, which is a bit of an unusual pick, it's not something you see very often, she is up in the sky, mounted on a uh, Pegasus, she does have Earth Blood. Flesh to Stone. She has actually got her... Oh, she doesn't have her full kit. I was... Or does she? She does. Okay, she's got Awakening of the Wood, Earth Blood, Flesh to Stone, Shield of Thorns, uh, Regrowth, and Dwellers Below, as well as Arcane Conduit, Life Bloom, and R of the Lady. Interestingly enough, no Bombardment Spell, which I think is really, really good in this matchup. Going over the compositions here for the forces of High Elves and Tomb Kings. It's a bit of an interesting mix. Uh, the front line here is mostly undead. You can see it's mostly Skeleton Warriors with some Hecarn Troop Warriors thrown in. Uh, this is not something you see very often. Necar and Warriors, uh, kind of a weak unit. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how they hold up stat-wise to other units in their tier, but most 5 to 600 gold units are a bit on the trash tier, so we'll definitely see how they perform here. We might see, they might do well, hopefully they do. I definitely would hope so. I would like to see uh, some good old action out of them. Uh, then there are even more Skeleton Warriors, some Skeleton Spears, King Akesh's Scorpion Legion, just providing a screen for a very dense High Elf uh, shooting box. Now there is some uh, Tomb King support in here as well. There's some Tomb Guard with Halberds over there. Uh, there's a single unit of Skeleton Archers. We do also have a Bone Giant up here in the sky, a Necrotech to support him with Regrowth, as well as, uh, I'm not entirely sure what this other one is, is that uh, Stone Shaper, so plus 10 armor, Missile Resist, obviously very good against Empire. Um, we do have a few Shopti, so it's definitely a bit of a mishmash of units uh, all over the place. Is there a caster somewhere for the uh, Tomb Kings? Of, of course there is. There's be a Lich Priest of Nekara, obviously backing up this sort of squishy trash infantry front line. You want Lord of Nekar for the heals, with Joff's Incantation of Blade, Cursed Blades, Incantation of Protection, and Usirian's Incantation of Vengeance. In the sky, we do have a, a few uh, Cairns, and uh, the Bone Giant moving forward. He is heavily shoved on up, and he's looking to take some pot shots at this army over there. For the rest of the build, for the High Elves, we do have a bunch of Lothar and Seaguard, a mix of shields, and uh, is there there's not something without? I thought there were some without, but there are apparently not. Uh, we do also have the Everqueen's Court Guard providing a bit of AP. Pure Main Company, White Lions, uh, Keepers of the Flames with some elite infantry in the back to help stiffen up that uh, just more trashy uh, front line from the Tomb Kings. And then some, uh, well, there's a Shopti, but we do have a unit of Dragon Princess on this flank, heavily Chevron up, and then the Fireborn on this flank. So quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of stopping power there. Unfortunately, it does look like the High Elf player here did not decide to bring a caster, which could potentially be an issue. Already, the Bone Giant is taking a bit of a pounding, because if we go off over to the other side of the map, we can see that the forces of Middenland have brought the Hammer of Witches, which is an absolute powerhouse in artillery duels. Uh, there's also, you know, Blessed Field Tribuches, multiple mortars, and it's just an absolute artillery park over here. Furthermore, a whole bunch of cavalry. We've got mounted yeomen, we've got mounted yeomen archers, more mounted yeomen, knights errant, so a bunch of trash to disrupt backlines, royal pegasus knights to provide some mobile anti-large. We do have a grail relic to keep things in check down here, a paladin for some anti-large and guardian. Uh, we do have knights of the realm over on this flank, a bunch of trash, spearmen at arms with shields, spearmen at arms, men at arms, uh, foot squires, just a bunch of garbage troops, a bunch of peasant bowmen with peasant bows with fox arrows, and then for the front line, it's mostly mid inland troops, we've got swordsmen, swordsmen, uh, some great swords thrown into the mix, and then on the flank here, some handguns. This is a bit of an interesting deployment, not something I would recommend necessarily, I would usually generally uh, re recommend, if you're box doing a death, uh, sort of doom box, uh, put your handguns inside the doom box, it's safer. Uh, some great swords are in there as well to provide a bit of elite infantry staying power. And these guys, you know, they'll trade well against, say, white lions or obviously against Nakarn warriors and troops like that. Regardless, the lines are closing in on each other because 
or are the lines closing in on each other? They are not, in fact. You can see that uh, it's a bit of an exchange here between the Bone Giant and the artillery pieces, trying to whittle down uh, some of these troops here in the back. Uh, unfortunately, the artillery is coming in hot and heavy on High Queen Kalita, whittling her down. We can watch this Bone Giant shot coming in, sailing into the uh, Hammer of the Witches and almost taking a model out. I think it came pretty close to taking a gun out, which would have been really nice, but unfortunately, the uh, engagement is going to continue. And in the meantime, the Hanekarn Warriors are taking a pounding from the mortars. It's just really brutal stuff. Right now, these guys really can't afford to be too campy because the forces of Empire and... Um, and... Uh, Bretonia, they've got just got a huge artillery advantage. Hammer of Witches is losing, in fact, the gun, so definitely beneficial. Do keep in mind that uh, there can be heals put down on the Bone Giant because we do have that wonderful Necrotect over here. Uh, the Fire Wizard, which I actually forgot to mention, there is a Bright Wizard here. Uh, he did pop a bombardment on the Bone Giant, which is not what you want. I did miss this guy, so I do want to go over his spells real quick. He does have the Piercing Bolts of Burning. He does have Firestorm, which is great against Chaff. Not or Flamestorm is not the most amazing Vortex ever. It's pretty trash, but at least against mobs of Chaff, it's really strong. Flamestorm Ruin is a great buff, and Cascading Fire Cloak is as well, so potentially a lot of damage there. No fireball, which is a bit surprising. That's I feel like a mandatory spell almost if you're bringing Bright Wizard. Unfortunately for the Bright Wizard though, he does get clocked in the face by a very angry Bone Giant. Uh, but sitting here, sitting and waiting, it's just starting to get really punishing for the forces of the uh, of the uh, Tomb Kings because you can see the Nehekarn Warriors, they're losing a lot of HP. That artillery barrage constantly pounding the Bone Giant. Certainly the Bone Giant will be able to survive, but still he's taking a pounding. Over here the Bright Wizard is being routed off by these very angry carrion, but um with the Pegasus Knights coming in to help, I don't think he's going to be able to. They're going to be able to put him down, which means they're probably going to go down. The handguns there might be doing more friendly fire than good. I'm not entirely sure. You can see the cannon actually going in and hurting the Royal Pegasus Knights as well. But uh, despite the help from the High Elves, definitely things not going too well for the Tomb King and the High Elf Alliance there. They're, they're getting pounded by that artillery and definitely do need to make a move soon, most likely, because unless the Bone Giant can win this duel against the Hammer of Witches, which it might, in fact. Uh, they are going to be in some bad shape. You can see the Hammer of Witches, well, it's down to one gun, so probably the Bone Giant can win. Uh, he does still have some HP. He's actually getting restored right now, which is really good. Having a pocket healer is very beneficial. And, of course, the Necrotech is also providing this guy with some armor, and perhaps more importantly, with some missile resist. Unfortunately, these uh, poor Lothan Seaguard are going to get pounded by artillery, though. Fortunately, it's not very accurate. I do believe these mortars are not chevroned, so that's definitely uh, fortunate. Because chevroned up mortars will mulch through lower-end troops, but uh, with, without chevrons, they're going to struggle to hit. In the meantime, the Hammer of the Witches is taken offline. It actually loses all of its guns, so definitely an advantage. And suddenly, I, I suppose I was wrong. I was saying that they, these guys are going to get pounded here, but they are kind of winning out this artillery duel. Hammer of Witches is now removed from play, which means that the lords can push in much more safely. Um... And it also means the cavalry has much more freedom of movement because most of this Bretonian mob is pretty trash. Uh, mounted yeomen, you know, not, not exactly great. Uh, Knights of the Aaron are not going to be taking on something like a lot of them Seaguard, even much less the Fireborn. And yeah, so suddenly things are looking alright. Unfortunately, though, one thing I do think is a bit of an issue. I do think that these infantry do need to push forward. We do need to start seeing these lines push up a little bit uh, because the Bone Giant is going to be out of ammo shortly, and just letting yourself get pounded by the mortars, I think, is a bit of a mistake. But. Unfortunately, the mortars have shifted fire to the Lothan Seaguard, so that while they are pounding this unit into dust, it does mean that the backline here is not being hurt. You can see the Hive player now pushing forward with the Everqueen's Court Card with his troops, uh, so slowly but surely kind of making his way to the front. You can see Boris here diving in on the Lothan Seaguard. Not entirely sure that's the brightest idea, but uh, this might not be where you want to be in life, because you're going to get pounded by these Everqueen's Court Guard. They are a very squishy unit against mortar fire, but oh my goodness, just look at poor Boris getting dumpstered there. Absolutely brutal stuff. In the meantime, over here, this little posturing here with the handguns, probably also a bit of a mistake because it's opened them up to these Dragon Princes and Tyrion who are just dashing in there. Now, Tyrion does not have Sunfang, so he can't do any sort of melting against squishy troops, but still, there's a lot of potential there. Uh, Boris here is going to pop Foe Seeker, and he's going to be regening, of course, so it could be an issue, but um, nonetheless, they did manage to zone him off. Over there, the Bone Giant ting off on something. I suppose he was aiming at either the Bright Wizard or, the Necar or, the, uh, or Boris. Not entirely sure. I do think the uh, the Prophetess here should be popping some heals on these guys because that, that's part of being a team. <laughs> heal, heal your friends. Um, it can be useful, especially here to keep the Bright Wizard in the fight. He could potentially still be useful. In the meantime, though, I did miss it, but the Fireborn here is running cleanup, just mushing these guys. They've, they've lost two models. They've completely demolished the two Mounted Yeomen. They're trashing the Knights of the Realm. Uh, the Lothan Seaguard are in there as well, but still, oh my goodness, Fireborn, just a ludicrous unit, shattering those units, forcing them off the field, and the Pegasus Knights here sitting, looking pretty, uh, just a bunch of suckers up there, while the Fireborn run ham and destroy everything. Uh, 
In the meantime, here in the front line, the handgunners who pushed forward, and this is, I think this is a bit of a mistake, just like I think that these guys should push in. I also think that at this point, the Empire should probably be pushing in to pressure this shooting. But instead, they're letting their handguns get engaged in this sort of fight, and it's not really working. Um, handguns don't be Loth and Seaguard. Uh, sorry to tell you, but <laughs> it does not work. In the meantime, though, the Fireborn are going to get caught out. They did overextend a bit. Definitely a little bit of missed micro there on the high health players part. But the Fireborn, oh, they still do have 30 models, but there is no healing form, so that could be an issue. In the meantime, they are just going to get smushed. The Bro Pegasus Knights have finally decided to get off their posteriors and do something. Uh, I do think that perhaps the Bone Giant could have gotten some shots into them and taken down a few models uh, in hindsight. But regardless, the Vlines are pushing forward. You can see there is a uh, shot there from, I think that was the Venom Staff, perhaps, or something. I'm not entirely sure what was that explosion. Um, but whittling down this, this formation of spears a little bit, you can see the great swords. You're getting charged by Tyrion as well as the Dragon Princes. Obviously, Boris, he might be potent against Dragon Princes, but he's not going to be able to take on Tyrion. If he gets caught in a fight against Tyrion, Tyrion is going to turn him to mush. Uh, it's not even going to be close. He's popping Flaming Sword Ruin. This guy's huge mistake. Flaming Sword Ruin is something you never want to pop against Tyrion and Dragon Princes. Look at the resistances here. Tyrion, 45% fire resistance. Dragon Princes, 70% fire resistance. You're actually debuffing yourself. You're making your life harder. So don't do that, guys. <laughs> don't use magic damage. Or don't use fire damage, sorry, against Tyrion and Dragon Prince. You can see Boris here being chunked by Tyrion. And in the meantime, you know, the line is pushing. Uh, interesting enough, the Tomb Kings are swinging through the woods here, looking to get a bit of a flank. Not entirely sure why, but you can see over here, unfortunately, the Void Pegasus Knights are diving in there. They're going to do quite a bit of hurt. Uh, the, the High Elves are starting to run low on ammo, which is a bit of an issue. Uh, the Ever Queen's Court Guard almost done. Um... Fortunately, though, the Knights of the Realm also kind of done. So it's been a very attritious fight. It's been some very slow trickling in of resources from both sides. And I think the results have been uh, kind of unfortunate. Uh, you can see there's been huge losses. You can see there's shot here on a flanking run, looking to get into the back line. Uh, they're going to be trying to save the Sisters of Avalorn here from the uh, Royal Pegasus Knights, which is not a bad idea. Obviously, these guys are not ideal or not very good at all against Pegasus Knights. But if they can bog them down and then the Sisters can wail on these guys, they will teach them a real lesson. Now over here, mortars are mulching the skeleton warriors, and this is a huge issue, of course, for Tomb Kings. They are very squishy, they're very susceptible to that sort of fire, so they're just getting, just getting pounded into dust. In the meantime, the Bone Giant here, taking one for the team, he is out of ammo, so he's pushing into the peasants, but he is taking such a pounding from those peasant posts and getting whittled down. In the meantime, on the periphery, you can see these guys really whittled down. There's not much to say. There's a very beaten up uh, contingent of infantry you are trying to push forward. But over here, they are able to remove most of these knights errant from the field. And High Queen Kalita is still around kicking. So while things might look very grim right now for the uh, blue team, or the, or, the, uh, or the Tomb Kings and the uh, Hiles, and certainly in the balance of power, it looks that way. It is important to keep in mind that Boris Toddbringer is almost dead. The Little Bright Wizard is almost dead. And the uh, Prophet is also almost dead. Honestly, if they are able to remove or surgically remove a few of these lords and a few critical units here, they, there's not much ammo left for anything except the peasant bows. The mortars are basically out. The handguns, fairly easy to route. And things could suddenly snowball very, very badly, um, potentially, for the forces of uh, Bretonian Empire if, if this continues. So we are able to see Quiet Queen Kalita pushing up, the Lich Priest of Nekara pushing in. Uh, unfortunately, the Bone Giant here is absolutely getting destroyed, but at the same time, they are removing these Knights of the Realm from the field. The Tomb Guard is still in very good health. The Royal Pegasus Knights actually are getting destroyed, which surprises me, honestly. These guys don't have very good sustained melee stats, though, so maybe I sh shouldn't be that surprised. The uh, Ever Queen's Court Guards here are doing some great job. They've got, well, Damn, I didn't realize. 45 and 63. So, I mean, their melee stats are monsters. Once these guys lose their charge, they're basically useless against them. And uh, the shop, they dump in a little bit of AP, and they're up to 7 kills, which is really not bad. So, I completely underestimated how much these guys would do. Maybe the charge bonus helps a little bit. I mean, these guys only have 30-some melee defense. Maybe that's it. But regardless, the shop, they are doing some work. Pegasus Knights are really suffering. So, you know what? I would underestimated that a bit. Over here, in the meantime, Tyrion is getting pounded by peasants, but they're peasants. So, there's not much they can do. Uh, Tyrion does have 125 armor, he's got crazy missile resist, he's very, very tanky. Uh, and in the meantime, there's a bit of a pit fight going down over here. Now, Skeleton Warriors are not anything to write home about. Neither are Nekarn Warriors, uh, but Men-at-Arms are not very good either. And neither are Peasant Mobs. So, except for the Paladin here, and maybe the Foot Squires, there isn't much really swinging the tide here. And you can see, now there's more reinforcements being pushed in. The Lich Priest here is going to be able to cast some buffs, drops some Contation of Cursed Blades, providing a buff. And if the leadership starts buckling, this pocket could fall apart a bit. 
We do also see the Tomb Kings have hit the Realm of Souls here, uh, which is going to be very beneficial. It means they're going to be able to get their summon, which could compromise the backline. And the Bone Giant here, still around kicking on 10 HP, finally does crumble in the midst of the buff formation here, but he has done his country proud. He's done some good work. And the uh, Keepers of Flame here, committing to the fight against the Swordsmen, against the Spearmen, and uh, dying to a man, and basically, you know, exploding on these squishy trash troops is probably surprisingly not bad. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how much damage the explosion and self-immolation does, but uh, it probably does a good bit, I'd imagine. In the meantime, the Tomb Guard are getting focused by Peasant Trash, but honestly, they're not bad in this situation. There's a lot of stuff here that they can't really fight them very effectively. Uh, Tyrion is still running amok. Do keep in mind, Tyrion does have the Heart of Avalon, which is not proc'd, I do believe, which means that if he does finally drop low, he's going to be able to recover. Uh, and although the Royal Pegasus Knights here are trying their best, crap, they're still on 9 miles, that's pretty crazy. But although they are trying their best, um, you know, they're, they're pretty whittled down. Tyrion is coming in with the Steel Chair to really womp on uh, good old Boris. Oh, it looks like he's actually reconsidered, and he's going after, like, some men-at-arms to show his how macho he is, I guess. I don't know. But um, <laughs> he's beating up on some men-at-arms there. But uh, Tyrion, if he gets on Boris, this is going to be a very sad day for Boris. He does get Deadly Onslaught there and escape. Uh, the Royal Pegasus Knight's still running around. But definitely, it's a bit of a scrappy fight, a bit protracted. You can see the Ushapti summon here mulching through the backline, tearing up these peasant bows. Uh, skeleton spears are overwhelming the backline, inundating these troops, uh, flooding things over there. And over here, the Paladin does actually break, and shockingly enough, and this, I, I guess with High Queen Kalita in there, I completely missed it, but those foot squires routed too. So this whole contingent has suddenly been removed from play, which is a huge win for the blue team. They are now able to push over to towards the center pocket and start whittling things down over there. The Keepers of the Flame just don't give up. There's 21 models here. They're still fighting to the bitter end. Less than 600 HP, murderizing these Spearmen. Um, the Tomb Guard also holding the great their own there. And Tyrion, who is getting whittled down a bit, he's still got Heart of Avalorn, so if things drop too bad, he's going to recover. Now, what I think here Tyrion should do is dive in against Boris, try to take him out. Uh, Boris is really low, and if you could force a leadership route, High Queen Kalita does have... Uh, now, you can see over here some desperation setting for the Bretonians as they commit their profitus, but High Queen Kalita, she does have Tomb Strike, so she can potentially tear out all of the trash here. Uh, if you're able to remove the leadership from play, and certainly you can see Prophetess of Life here fleeing, running for dear life, getting pursued by a very angry snake lady. And uh, she does manage to take off in the nick of time, but she is routing. That's definitely not great. Uh, elsewhere, Tyrion is sitting out. I think this, like I said, I think this is a bit of a mistake. I think Tyrion really needs to be in here, taking advantage of his Heart of Avalorn, get in there, get on top of Boris, beat the snot out of him, get him out of play. Um, not, don't let Dushapti sit here getting wailed on. In the meantime, the Tomb Guard, you know, holy, what the hell? Do you even keep us flame? They just don't die. Oh my god, I, they just, like, two of them exploded. I love these guys. Look at them. Uh, 8 miles, 7 miles, another one exploding there in a burst of flame, 6. Oh my god, 200 miles, over 168 kills. These guys are nuts. Uh, they are finally dying, but oh my god, they're doing their country proud. Tomb Guard over here, also 82 kills, no pushovers, of course. And the High Queen pulling things through, and you can see balance of power starting to shift decisively to back towards the favor of uh, the Tomb Kings and the High Elves. Uh, basically, Bretonia and Empire has been forced away. Uh, the Paladin did make a final sort of do-or-die effort here against Tyrion, but these few Everqueen's Court Guards and Tyrion are just beating the snot out of him. And like I said, Tyrion still does have... Uh, well, he does have Fane and Repose, but I also do believe he still does have the uh, Heart of Avalon. So if that pops, this guy's getting nothing done. Um, there's a bunch of screaming from the Everqueen's Court Guard, even though there's only six of them. You can see some handguns here do recover. There are a few troops rallying here and there. But at this stage, once the Snake Lady gets rid of a few of these key troops... This situation is going to go down the hill, I think, very quickly. Uh, she's Because she's going to have Fear and Terror going for her, and these last few trash troops are not going to be able to hold it together. Obviously, Boris is very badly whittled down. I don't know where Tyrion is. I'm surprised his heart hasn't propped it. I don't know how just how low he is. I think it's 20% HP, but I don't know how close he is. He is committing here against the Prophetess, which is very good. If he can remove that leadership from play, things will go very, very badly. Uh, he charges and misses. That Boo! <laughs> Boo, Tyrion! But in all seriousness, you can see there, he gets a swing, completely routes her, and she's going to be forced to quit the field there. Uh, I don't know if she flees completely, but she's routing. In the meantime, Snake Lady diving in, she's very high on HP and going in against Boris, doing what I think Tyrion should have done a while ago. Uh, definitely whittling down Boris here, beating the snot out of him. He drops down to under 700 HP, getting torn apart. Uh, oh my goodness, Snake Lady's not a bad duelist either, in fact. I do believe she outtrades a lot of lords in just a straight-up fight. She's, she's nasty. But with that leadership snap, and with the fact that I think she's got Tomb Strike active right now, she's going to completely shatter this pocket. And with that, it is going to be GG for the forces of Tomb Kings and High Elves. So, uh, that was a match that definitely went a bit back and forth. Um... It was pretty fun to see some units. I don't 
know if uh, there were there was well there were some units we don't normally see, and I think that was really cool to, cool to see in a game. Uh, going over the builds real, or over the sort of results real quick, I do think the build here for the Tomb Kings were pretty solid. You do get your bunch of trash. Well, that's kind of the Tomb King way. You either go with a bunch of trash or a bunch of monsters or kind of a mix of both, I guess. Um, then honestly, against Empire and to to a lesser extent, but mostly against Empire, you don't want to have that overwhelming amount of monsters because handguns and artillery like monsters a lot uh, <laughs> or someone like Balthazar or Witch Hunters they'll, they'll feast on you for sure so I do like the fact that this build was very heavy on the on the sort of infantry and that sort of stuff but you still do have a few counters in there in case you're to deal with Bretonia you do still have that Bone Giant which is very useful you do still have those Tomb Guard Halberds um, you still have Kalita who's actually not bad in that situation either and the front line here decent enough I think for dealing with most of what you're facing the only unit that's going to give you a lot of trouble is great swords you can see the kill counts definitely showed it uh, looking over at the high elves uh, definitely the build was a very elite uh, probably relying of course on the fact that Davina here was running or uh, backwards but <laughs> Davina here was running a very chaff heavy build um, so definitely pretty cool I do think there was a bit of a serious lack of synergy uh, between the two. The High Elves pushing forward uh, way before the Tomb Kings did. Uh, I definitely think there should probably be a more aggressive push from the Tomb Kings and High Elves. You don't want to let your opponent sort of wail on you uh, for ages. Um, I think both sides should have been a bit more aggressive. I think the, uh, honestly, Empire and Bretonia, if you don't invest in Chevrons in your artillery, particularly Mortars and um, Trebuchets, you're not going to get great value out of them at max range. You need to push, wheel them a little closer and start doing some damage, I think, up front and per, up close and personal. And when I say up close and personal, I mean like 250, 300 yards. Like, you need to get a bit closer. And I think the fact that they were kind of sitting off at standoff distance did hurt the unit pretty significantly and, and just achieving its full potential there. Uh, but I also think that the, uh, the uh, Tomb Kings and Hives should have been a bit more aggressive as well. But uh, looking over the build here, obviously very elite. Some of these units got almost nothing done. The pure, pure, poor, pure. The poor pure main company got completely mulched. The Evergreen Scorecard dumpstered Boris, but then they kind of... Well, I guess they got a lot of kills, but I'm not entirely sure against what. I guess some, they did some work against the... Uh, against some men-at-arms, I think, that got in the back line. Um, the F Fireborn had a great run before finally overextending. The Lothan Sea Guard did some stuff. I do think a big mistake here is not running a caster. Obviously, Lore of Life, I don't think really helps that much with, say, Tomb Kings, but uh, still, having Lore of Life is really useful. It can help this sort of elite comp stay intact. Uh, into the late game, being able to heal your troops if they're stuck in sustained combat, uh, because Davina did remove that artillery piece from from the equation, losing models is not that likely, uh, so you can usually heal with Earthblood or Regrowth or things like that. Uh, then going over the other build, uh, I do think this is pretty, actually both builds are rather solid. I do think there was a few iffy choices. I think Bright Wizard, you should bring a Fireball, especially against Tomb Kings. And I think that with... Um, the uh, Bretonians, you didn't need all the spells on the Prophetess, but otherwise I do think these were some interesting builds, uh, trying to just counter both factions. I, I personally think that probably what they should have done is kind of gone for Empire countering the Tomb Kings, because that's what Empire does really damn well, with a lot of Black Powder, and then have Bretonia counteract the High Elves, because Bretonian Cav could have just dumpstered the High Elf Cav and really compromised the backline, things like Grand Lights and that sort of stuff. But that's just my two cents. It was a pretty cool build. Though. There's a lot of DACA here from the peasants. You always gotta love it. The Blessed Field Tribuchet, which is not something you see every day. Royal Pegasus Knights, just so many units that you don't see very often hitting the field, which is pretty cool. This Empire build, pretty standard. But uh, the Bretonia build here, very, very non-standard. Almost looks... I'm not sure if it's an auto-gen, to be honest. But uh, it doesn't really look like... It doesn't really look like it, to be honest. But uh, definitely a lot of variety there as far as units go. Um, and definitely pretty cool. For a lot, a lot of cool stuff there. I, 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 my only real critique there, besides a few little tidbits on the builds, like you probably want a caster, and you probably don't want to invest in all the spells. Really, would be that you want to be a little more aggressive. I think if your opponent has a, if your opponent is dominating you with artillery, you probably don't want to sit tight. And also, if your artillery is not getting maximum value at max range, perhaps you want to wheel a little bit closer, I think, to get uh, a little more value. Uh, it really can make a huge difference if you test out mortars, especially. They, they do so much better in mid-range combat if you are, uh, if you haven't chevron them. Uh, so... Just my just my little critique there. Otherwise, a very fun game. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, the, and I should mention, the Nekarn Warriors here actually performed rather well. They did get 50, 62, 37, 57 kills. They got completely annihilated before the match really started by that focus fire from the artillery. And they still came in strong in the fourth quarter there to wipe the enemy out. Uh, Shopti, also kind of an impressive performance. 
I think, uh, because they tore up the Pegasus Knights, which is not something I would have expected, but I guess they do have decent def melee defense, and the Pegasus Knights don't have very good melee defense, for all things considered. And there were some sisters there to help, so it was, it was pretty cool to see. It was definitely cool, it's a cool match to see. Uh, so, Thank you to the VNQ for sending this in. Uh, thank you to all the players here, Envy, Funk, Miller, Jacob, Miz, uh, for a great, fun, entertaining match. Uh, if you guys uh, enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share. Uh, if you have any comments, any criticism, any questions, uh, anything of that sort, uh, be sure to put them down below, and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. Uh, and if you do want to submit your own replays, I do have an email. Yeah, I, I love doing... Uh, community casting stuff because it helps us go over strategies and see what other people are doing there's a lot of different there's a lot of valid ways to play there's a lot of different strategies that you don't see and you're not going to see even from me i do try to mix things up as you guys probably know but there's just so many strategies so many ways you can play and it's always cool to see what you guys are doing just from recently playing with zoo devil uh i saw so many strats and so many builds i personally don't run and i don't see other people run uh that worked really rather well here with the vnq sending me some replays i see builds that i don't run but they work uh, and sure, it's a 2v2, but uh, so there's some stuff might be, have to be a little different, but still, stuff like Necron Warriors here performing really well, Shop Team rather well. Um, so, uh, if, if you guys are interested in in seeing me do more of these community casts, be sure to send them in, and I will uh, I will really appreciate that. Uh, so, I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.